You're not scared at all? No, no, no. I, I think I'm more scared of the living than I am of the dead, to be honest. <laughs> Can anyone tell me if there's a fly or something oh, flying is. around up by the window? But even as the team are setting up, they think they see something. In front of the window, on the bed end of the window, That's there's something there. white floating around in the air up there. Look, there's another oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Is this the infrared? Is, is that the infrared? No. no. Is it in the moth? I don't know. There it is again. Yeah. And there. Definitely something floating in at this, like oh, balls. Tape right. Give me a tape, someone, <laughs> quick. Can <laughs> follow me over? And no, they're not following you, but they were floating out the window. The team think they're seeing floating orbs of light, which have appeared during other investigations, and which they believe could be proof of paranormal activity. Well, this is incredible. We've only been here a couple of hours, and we've already got some orbs that um, seem to be... Well, it could be moths, I don't know, but uh, I haven't seen the... Uh... I haven't seen any moths. No. I've never seen anything like this on night one before. Are they now? They're still here. Yes. Yeah. There's one over by the window again, yeah. floating upwards. Yeah, it's gone out the window again. It looks like there's something in this. What is there? Yeah, there's one right above your head going upwards. Unfortunately, they can't be seen with the naked eye. The team has only ever recorded the orbs on infrared cameras. Yeah, I must admit, it feels a bit odd up here. Um but we can't see anything visually. Over. Yeah, you probably will feel odd because you know what's going on around you. I, I would say a lot of that's in the mind because of what's going on around you. Having said that, there is definitely something visible here and uh, I can't put this down to anything normal. It's not only the haunted bedroom where the ghost detectives think ghosts are on the move. It's so quiet, isn't it? It's very peaceful, isn't it? In the basement, clairvoyants Marion Goodfellow and Paul Hanrahan feel they've made contact with one of Penga's six lost souls. What are you trying to say to me? <laughs> she shut away. She shut away. Nobody's got to see Marion is upset because she believes she's in touch with the spirit of a teenage girl whose soul has yet to find eternal rest. I know what it is. She's got a birthmark and they think she's been touched by the devil. She, she hasn't. Marion, please don't leave. Everybody can go to the light. Everyone. Marion believes she can release souls from earthly torment. She's gone. Yeah. yeah. I can see the column of light retreating away from oh, thank, behind you. Thank God. So she has gone with the light. Yeah. And you can feel her energy has now left the room. Yeah, bless her. Great. Well done. <laughs> Shall we go up to the yeah. next level? Yeah, let's go up to the next level. After I'd gleaned as much information as I felt I could out of the spirit, I was trying to send them on their way, send them to a happier moment in their, in their time span and, if you like, send them on to heaven. As well as clairvoyance, dowsers like Anne Moore believe they can detect paranormal activity. She uses unusual dowsing rods. Well, this is called a Hartman rod. It does all manner of things. It will actually find... Uh, ghost spirits, whatever you'd like to call them for you, point them out, show you where they materialise, all sorts of things. So um, I literally let it take me. And do, do you have to ask it questions? Yes. Such? I mean, what I just said to it was, show me the line that the monk walks. And it is actually a ley line, it's an energy line, but it was his route, it was the one he followed constantly. So it's pointing now in that direction, but he comes from, if I stand this way again, he comes from over here, he comes through that building, and then he goes in this direction and he takes a slight detour so I just follow this and it takes me in the direction that um, he wants to walk okay right so we just walk forward following this so we let it take me where it wants to go so that's the only trouble with um, dowsing you go by a direct route which sometimes means through people's gardens and various other things so again I'm going to take a slight detour just so I don't step through garden and then he basically 
disappears through the wall, which is here. And on the other side of here was the um, actual banqueting hall, the main hall of the castle. And that's where he disappears to. Back in the bedroom, they still think they're seeing floating orbs. No. Yeah, there's one just coming off the bed, the bed now, two, heading towards the window. Two, another one small. Uh, no. Can you see me? Yeah, you just put your hand right there. by it. No. Yeah, no. 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah. again, it's not dust. It's moving. There's three just gone. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Hold on. That could be dust, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We may have got dust. There's a lot of more together now. Where, by the bed? What was going on before is definitely different. Again, we've still got stuff up in the corner heading towards the yeah. window. Um, Look, and they're congregating, you know, yeah. they're all sort of heading for one place. It's, it's pretty weird. So, yeah. so are the ghost detectives onto something? Join us later. If you dare. <laughs> <laughs> The ghost detectives believe they are having their first brush with the paranormal at Pengersi Castle. They can see something floating around the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it's not dust. It's moving. There's three just gone. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's absolutely amazing. They're smaller than the ones last week. They're like specks of light. Mm. I've just popped down there to look, and it, they're just dancing around. Perhaps we can understand the ghost detective's excitement as the room has so many stories. None so terrifying as the tale of Pengersik's ghostly hound. On dark, cold nights, a fearsome howling echoes through Pengersik's walls. Those unlucky enough to venture into the haunted bedroom risk meeting the hound from hell. For in the fireplace, the snarling jaws of a vicious dog have been witnessed on dozens of occasions. Those brave or stupid enough to stay say the experience leaves them chilled to the marrow and with the feeling that their every move is being watched by two searing canine eyes. Yeah, we've got them all over the place up here, mate. <laughs> so what are the floating orbs the ghost detectives believe they found? They decide to introduce more equipment. This one there. Ross, um, what we're going to try and do, can we point an infrared camera up at the location of these orbs and see what we can get? When we were running the, the orb test last week, it was all done on infrared, and they had a certain look to them. What I want to do is take the, the light into the same conditions we had at Bowden House and see if they look the same as the ones we saw last week. We got it. We've got it on but what are they really seeing on their mini cam? Phantoms or wishful thinking? I spotted it. It's shot oh, yeah, it yeah, swirl. It, yeah. There it goes out the window again. Oh, God, yeah, look. No, it's definitely not, because you'd have it all around here as well, wouldn't you? And it all sort of like shoots. Yeah, there you go. You wouldn't get a dust particle moving at that speed so quickly out, would you? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> moving around again now? Oh, yes, they're dancing around quite happily. Um, I don't think that's dust, mate. There's another one just above the camera. There's one there. This seems too good to be true. Oh, there's, there goes one floating up. One thing that's puzzling me, Andy, is why are we only getting them on the one camera? You've got two other cameras here that are on um, the two nine-inch screens, one black and white, one colour, yet we don't appear to be getting any on the other two cameras. Can you clarify that, please? You've got three, four cameras in this room, and they're not appearing on any other camera. So I think it's because this light has a beam directly in front of it. It's quite a, um, a heavy floodlight that we're picking up a lot of the dust in front of here. Because it's close to the camera, it's appearing that it's actually further away than it is, and that's causing the problem. I hoped at first that it was orbs, obviously, because of the success we had last week, but looking at it now, it looks like dust to me. Um, but then again, you can never rule out the possibility that it, it, there could be an orb in there. Um, we just need to review the footage, really, and, uh, and, and see. I mean, obviously, it looks, looking at it now, um, they're reacting, the dust particles are reacting with people walking around in it.